We are back. I hope you have a Bible. We're going to look for a moment in God's Word. And, um, and it's very important to see what God has for us to say this morning. Yeah, we gather for worship, we gather for prayer, we gather for celebration, but also we gather for God's Word. It's very important that we read God's Word, we study God's Word, and we are challenged by, by God's Word because that's the only one who brings life. Amen? Now, guys... All this broadcasting here, guys, you are here with me. I want you to be alive, yeah? So say amen, support me in here. I don't see these guys at home. I have no idea what they do. I'm, I don't know if they are watching me or if they put me on mute. <laughs> so, they, so, but at least you are here. At least I want to see your support in here in this morning, amen? amen. Okay, we started uh, this mini, mini series of sermons called Connection Church, yeah? Connecting you to... And you're filling the blankets, the, the, the blanks, the blankets, the blanks, not the blankets, the blanks. Um, and last, last, last week we looked at connecting you to Jesus, yeah, because we want to, to have a, a unique change, a unique uh, uh, transformation. And today's message is, is connecting you to a purpose, connecting you to a purpose. Now, um, I heard, a, I, I, I read a joke about a little girl who, who went to her mother and, and said, and, and asked her mother, Mommy, why do you cut the ends of the meat before you cook it? And, and the, the girl's mom was thinking, well, I, I think it tastes better, but, but the, the reason is because your grandmother used to do the same. So the little girl went to the grandmother and said, Grandma, why, why you and mom cut the end of the meat and, and before you put it in the pan? And, and the grandma was thinking, well, I think because, you know, probably it's more juicy if you do it this way, you know, capture everything. But I have no idea exactly why. I think I do it because your, your nana used to do the same. So the girl was thinking, wow, I have to go to the nana. So she went to, the, to her nana and said, nana, why mom and grandma and, and you, you know, you cut the meats, the end of the meat before you put it in a pan. And the nana said to the girl, well, I have no idea why your, why your grandmother and your mom Cousin of me, but I did it because my, my fry pan was too small. <laughs> so the whole idea is that we are driven either by design or by default. Yeah? The life here on earth, I, I just read the life here on earth, it can be around 25,000 plus days that we have. And, and, and every day that we live is, is a gift from God. And every day that we live, we live it either with purpose or without purpose. And, and, and the, the interesting thing that we as humans, we, we have compartmentalized our lives in different areas. We have a church area, we have work area, we have hobbies area, we have families area, we have social area, and, and so on. Uh, but if you look from God's perspective, from God's perspective, there is no distinction between different areas of our lives. God doesn't have a purpose for your church life. God doesn't have a purpose for your family life. God doesn't have a purpose for your, uh, for your social life. God doesn't have a purpose for your career life. God has a purpose for your life as a whole. He doesn't make comp compart compartments, yeah, areas that say, no, I'm going to bless you here and not here. No, God says, I have a, a, a purpose for you as a whole, for your life as a whole. And sadly, many of us don't have an idea what our purpose is. Now, I did a, a Google search, on, on, and I put there, what is my purpose? And it came up 1,625,000,000 results. 1,625,000,000 results. That shows me that people are thinking of a purpose, right? Now, Rick Warren is a, is a pastor in America from Saddleback Church in California. And he wrote some, of, some books and, and, and great books. But he, he wrote in particular two books called The Purpose Driven Church and The Purpose Driven Life. And this is what he says in his book about purpose. Quote, there are factors that can drive your life but all lead to the same dead end. Unused potential, unnecessary stress, unfulfilled life. Without a purpose, life is without meaning. 
activity without direction and events without reasons, end of quote. So what is this idea of, of purpose? Because, because we want you to be connected to a purpose. Yeah? Connection Church is, 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 is here, exists so you can be connected to a purpose. So what is purpose? Now I look into the dictionary and the, pur the dictionary says purpose means the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Now, some of you are, are watching online, are watching me online, live stream, and, um, and you, you have this option because we are streaming through a, a camera, yeah, a camera that is, is, is right here, and, and, and you are watching to a device, either to a, a smartphone or a computer or, or a tablet or a TV, and, and you are doing this because it served its purpose. This camera served its purpose to live streaming the service. And you are watching this live streaming through the gadget that is served its purpose, right? Exists to serve their purpose. Now, a car exists to what? To take you, it's not exists to drive because you drive the car, <laughs> but the drive exists to take you to the destination of your choice, right? Uh, a phone exists to communicate with each other, right? That's its purpose, to communicate one another. A cow exists to have a Big Mac, right? <laughs> yeah? You know, or a nice juicy steak, right? A pig exists to have pig in blankets, right? <laughs> Amen? Now it's getting an appetite harder and harder. They fulfill its purpose, right? The church exists to connect you to God and to His purpose. And that's what we're going to learn this morning. That the church exists to connect you to God and His purpose. Because everything and everyone has a purpose. So what is your purpose? Or, or better say, what is God's purpose for yourself, for your life? Do you have a purpose? Do you think God has any purpose for your life? But maybe you are not connected to the purpose. Everyone's life is, is driven by something. Yeah? Either by guilt, some people by worry, uh, fear, others are insecurity, anger, resentment. Others are, are driven by their past, by their possessions, by their parents, by their money, and, and you can name it. But God wants us to, to be purpose-driven people, driven by His plan, driven by His purpose for our lives. That's where uh, the meaning and the significance comes into our life. And we as a church, Connection Church, exist to connect you to a purpose that brings meaning and significance. So I want you to open your Bible in Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to read from verse, uh, first 10 verses. Ephesians chapter 2. We have all these nice epistles. Go eat popcorn. Yeah? After, um, after uh, Corinthians, go eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Go eat popcorn. That's another way to learn, to memorize the Bible. Just in case you want to memorize the Bible. And you should memorize the Bible. Amen? Can I hear amen here? Amen. Did you hear that? Good. I want to read from um, this morning from New King James, New King's, New King James Version, because there are some words that uh, I want to focus on this morning. So Ephesians chapter two, verse one says like this. You have the the words on the screen, but feel free to read in your own Bible. Ephesians chapter two, verse one says, "And you, he made the life." who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you were once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves, ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love, with which he loved us, 
even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, Paul is writing this letter to the church of Ephesus, the Christians in Ephesus, from prison. And, and maybe he's thinking, you know, maybe the same like we are thinking today, or we have moments like that where, where we're kind of thinking, well, we are, I don't see my purpose in here. I mean, I, I'm, stuck in this, I'm, I'm stuck in this chamber, in this, this room, all, uh, surrounded by four walls, and I have no idea what my purpose is this. I don't know why God put me here because I don't see any way out. I don't see my purpose fulfilling from these four walls. He had these moments thinking, what am I doing here, right? And Paul's concerns was that the Christians in Ephesus would, would, would listen to the, that was his question, that, that they, will, they will start listening to the voices of, of influence that, that society has. And, and he mentioned here the three voices, the ways of the world, what does the world focus on? It's all about getting instead of giving. And then there's a Satan voice who wants to, to take our focus away from eternity and, and to focus on here and now. And then the, the third voice who is the voice of the, the craving of the flesh voice, which is the, the internal selfishness. It's all about what I want. It's all about me. But Paul knew his purpose. In spite of, of being in a prison surrounded by four walls, Paul knew his purpose. He was a Jew. He was trained under one of the most well-known teachers to be a, a religious leader for his people. His job was to teach people the scriptures. And, and as a Jew, a member of the nation of Israel, his purpose was to, to lead his nations towards fully obeying God so that God will bless them. And then we see that Paul uh, met Jesus uh, on, uh, on his life and then his entire purpose changed. Paul came to the conclusion that what matters most is not what, but who. Living for who matters most and gives most of the significance in your life. He came to the conclusion that Jesus mattered the most. And, and Paul made his life all about Jesus. And that was our first message last week, to be connected to Jesus, because that's what mattered the most. But today I want to move forward a bit further and, and talk about not who, but why. Why? Purpose comes from having a sense that, that we are doing things that matters. And purpose comes from knowing the why of our lives. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Purpose motivates us. Right? It, 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 it gets us out of bed in the morning. It gets us through the, through the tough times because we have a purpose that we are looking forward. So let's look in our text and, and I want to point a few things here about purpose. First of all, our purpose is driven by our new identity in, in Jesus. Look in verse 1. It says like this. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin... In, we, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which again is the voice of Satan, and the spirit who, knows, who now works in the son of disobedience, among whom also we, we are all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, the internal flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and, the, and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others." Our purpose is, is driven by our new identity in Jesus. Now, we can, we can get confused a bit of this word identity. Because we think of identity is, is who we are. Yeah? I'm a father. 
I'm a daughter, I'm a son, I'm a, a pastor, I'm a singer, and, and so on. But that's not our identity. That is our role. And that's the difference between roles and identity. Or we think identity is based on, on how we perform. A good father, a good son, a good daughter, a good singer, a good pastor, and so on. And if that's the case, you will be one day good and one day less good. I don't want to say bad, but less good, right? And because of this, because one day you are good, one day you are less good, because of that, your life will be like a, a bipolar disorder situation, right? Your mood is changing every single day. The feeling is changing every single day. One day you are satisfied with this, and one day you are not. One day you like yourself, one day you hate yourself. But your identity is, de is not determined by, by, by um, uh, uh, these performances. Your identity is determined by whose you are. And Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 1, it says that once you are different, you are like everybody else, but now you are purchased through Christ's blood and you are belonging to somebody else. And because of, of your, because of that, your identity changes. And because your identity changes, your purpose changes. So what does identity have to do with purpose? And that leads me to the second thing I want to point today. Our purpose is driven by our eternity with Jesus. Look what it says in verse 10. Verse 10. It says like this. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are the masterpiece of God that God prepared for us to work for good works to walk in them. We all have a struggle with now and here. And uh, I want you to watch a, a very short film from Francis Chan as he gives an example about now versus eternity. Because remember, our purpose is driven by our eternity in Jesus. And, 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 and Francis Chan has a, a very, very good example uh, of, of describing now versus identity. So I want you to, I want you to watch it uh, here. I think you guys, you have on the uh, online, Kenzie is going to put online, and guys, girls for us here in the, in the room. So let's watch it together, this video. Imagine this rope. Imagine this rope. Okay, pretend this rope just goes on forever. Okay? Just imagination. Pretend it goes around the world a few times. It doesn't. It ends at the rock. But uh, let's just imagine this thing goes on forever. Now imagine that this rope is a timeline of your existence. You just exist forever. You see this red part? This would represent your time on earth. You've got a few short years here on earth and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. This is, this is your existence. And what blows me away is some of you, all you think about is this red part. It's all you think about. You're consumed with this. You go, oh man, I can't wait till here. You know, I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna save, save, save so I can really enjoy this part right here. <laughs> And you're consumed with that, and you're thinking, oh man, am I going to get to travel? Am I going to eat well? Am I going to do this during this part? And I'm like, are you kidding me? What about this? What about this? What about, th what about all this stuff? It's, just, it's crazy to me, because the Bible teaches that what I do during this little red part determines how I'm going to exist for millions and millions and millions of years forever. And, and so why would I spend this little red part trying to make myself as comfortable as possible 
enjoying myself as much as I can. Paul says, look, I'm going to live my life for this mission. I'm going to spend my life, invest my life for this moment when I cross that finish line. See, I'm going to forget about all this stuff I could enjoy, and I'm not going to look around. I'm going to be like a runner just looking at that moment when I face God because when I face him, then I don't get this chance over again. We get one chance at this life on earth, and it can end at any second for any of us. We've got one chance at this, and then comes eternity. And I'm not going to be fooled. I'm not going to spend my life down here. See, people look at some of my decisions and go, oh, you're so stupid because that's going to really affect this. I go, no, you're stupid because it's going to affect all of this. Man, I, I, I'm serious. I, I look. I look at the way people live and I go, wow, that is so crazy. You are so crazy. You're going you're gonna to do that right now. Just enjoy right now. Not even knowing if you have tomorrow and you think that's smart and that I'm dumb. It doesn't make any sense. Paul goes, I'm not going to look around at all this stuff. And it's tempting. It's tempting to all of us. That's what I'm saying. Down here, it's crazy because everyone lives that way. Everyone lives for the red part. No one's thinking about the millions of years afterwards. It's, it's just this crazy deception that we can't get out of our minds. And Paul goes, I'm not doing that. He goes, I keep my eyes on that. I keep my eyes on that finish line. And I'm going to forget what's behind me. I'm not looking around. I'm just going to, I'm straining because I'm straining forward, I'm like stretching forward for that mark. I'm gonna pass this thing. I'm gonna live this out, and I'm gonna face him. I'm gonna come before the judges, and he's gonna hand me that trophy. He goes, I'm gonna get it, and I haven't gotten there yet. He goes, but I, you, you better believe I'm using every muscle, exerting every bit about me, because I'm gonna pass that line well.
to take part of the same purpose. So the goal of being recreated, the, the purpose of being made the new creation in Christ is to be partaker for his purpose, for his mission. And it says here, for good works. You were remade in Christ to accomplish action which are morally and beneficially good for you, good for those around you, and, and for your family, pleasing God. And the word here, for... Is, is called purpose. The word is purpose. For purpose. Created in Christ Jesus for. With a purpose. And the purpose is good works. Christ saved you for good works. To have a purpose. And in our text in Ephesians says also for good works. But you know what? It doesn't stop here. It says for good works to what? To walk in it to walk in it in verse 1 says in which once you what you walked so you walked once in a darkness but now you have a different purpose that you have to walk in it and there is a way of walking in which all uh, uh, you know all of us are formally engaged and and the verb walk is is an every hour is subjunctive which express the hope of daily conduct the word walk means to, to make one's way, to regular one's life, to make full use of opportunities. The word is in a, in a tense that suggests a, a once for all decision to walk in good works. In other words, it isn't some, a person that you turn, turn, turns on and off sometimes. You know, it's not like you, you, you walk uh, in a purpose for six months and then, and then you don't. It says a fixed way of life that is committed to living the way God intends for his people to live. It's a once-time commitment. You don't change now I'm walking and now I'm not walking. These good works are, are to be part of your life. God himself prepared good works. God himself prepared a purpose for you beforehand says here but you are responsible to walk in them and together as a church we want to find what is our purpose here and then and to connect you to a purpose and to help you to walk in that purpose that is why we have these 40 days of prayer and fasting to find the purpose that we exist as a connection church and to help you walk in that purpose. Amen? Now I want to end up with this. Your life can be lived in um, one of these three levels. We have the survival level, which most people live in the survival mode. They get by in life, you know, they are not really living, they are just existing. Yeah, I call that coma. They are in coma. They don't live, but they exist. They work hard and they live only for weekends. They never really have any major goals in life that they can live for. And the second level is the success level. Your, your focus is on, on paying off the mortgage or, or establish a, a comfortable lifestyle. And, and honestly, this level doesn't give you any satisfaction. You might think it gives you, but it doesn't. And then we have the third level, which is the significance level. Significance is when, when you know why you exist. Why you are here. You have a purpose for your life. You know that your life matters. You know that there is a meaning be behind what's going on in your life. And people who enjoy significance knows, one, knows about what on earth are they living here for. And my challenge for us is to, to move, move forward from survival and from, from success level, from this mode to a significance level. 
If you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus spent his life in, in a different parts of society. He spent his life with the religious leaders, with tax collectors, with children, with needy people, with, with sinners, with all kinds of people from, from all walks of life and different sections of, of, of society. He, he was a friend of sinners. He spent time with them, says the Bible. And, 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 and they saw his life and they heard his words and they, they felt his heart. He was comfortable around them and yet did not compromise his lifestyle and his character. Why? Because he lived on a significant level. Jesus had the purpose when he came on earth. And every day, Jesus lived his day with purpose. He knew that his life is short and every day he has to live his day with a purpose. He lived his day as a gift from God. And we want you to be connected to something. Why not start being connected to God's purpose? Being connected to connection church purpose. In building something that matters. Giving a significance in your life. To people around you. And in this neighborhood. Connection church. Connected to who? To Jesus. And they connected to why? For a purpose. Amen? Amen.